Be warned, my children. A horrible album will visit, followed by the crumbling of sanity itself. A parade of terrible production and unfunny skits. It walks among us as a shadow, void of talent, powered by its own stupidity, strengthened by its own painfully contrived horrorcore themes. A reflection of our album listening experience, cast and reflected back upon your ears. Brothers and sisters, the time has come for the shit talkers. The unleashing of the new episode. The arrival of the going off podcast. Pod. 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 What's going on, y'all? It's the going off podcast. It's Rack Critic Muse. <laughs> and oh boy. <laughs> We've got what they call in in the trades a doozy. <laughs> Yo. We're coming full force with two brand spanking new albums. Exactly. Fuck all that pop shit last week. We're going we're going back to hip hop. Let's take it back to the underground. Straight back to the old school. Well not because it just fucking came out. But from two like 90s rapper groups <laughs> when you think about it. Let's start with uh the dare I say Long awaited. Woo! Czarface meets Ghostface. Along the way, we've reviewed a Czarface album as a Patreon request from a couple years back. Since then, we reviewed the team up between Czarface and MF Doom. Yep. And apparently, you can get a uh, MF Doom to do an album with you. You can get Ghostface Killer to do, to do an album with you, but you can't get MF Doom and Ghostface Killer in the same room to do an album together. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. The MF Doom Zarface album kind of felt like, yeah, but what we're really waiting for is the Zarface <laughs> Ghostface album. And still, listening to this album, it's like, yeah, but what we really want is the <laughs> MF Doom and Ghostface. Like, you can never please everybody. Yeah, I think, I think we're being assholes at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but what are really. <laughs> 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 At this point, we're just dictating your careers. Okay, now this is what I want you to do next. <laughs> and you should wear a silly hat. Think about, you know, something from the 1800s. <laughs> the intro. Fucking back at ringside. You know, before... <laughs> They were doing the comic books. You know what I'm saying? That sort of thing. Now, now we switch genres. We're, we're, we're in wrestling. We got fucking... I don't know who it is doing a Randy Savage voice. This is funny to me because you got Zarface and you got Ghostface. Both of them have the superhero alt ego with the, with the you know, the, the uh, Tony Stark to completely be like, nah, we're going with the wrestling theme. It's like, whoa. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's unexpected, but what I'd mentioned on the show, there's an instrumental Zarface album that came out either earlier this year or last year, and it's just wrestling themed. Like, Zarface is scheduled to lose tonight, but they're not going down without a fight. And the theme is like, <laughs> they're supposed to job, but it's like, nah, man, we've been jobbing for too many years. We're, we're fucking gunning for the titles. <laughs> We're going against the script, and we're winning the titles. Between every track or at the end of every track, there's, like, the commentary talking about, like, what's going on in the match, and that was pretty cool. So it felt familiar listening to the intro track in this one where... That's cool. ...where you got the guy doing the Macho Man impression uh, being interviewed <laughs> by the late, great uh, Mean Gene Okerlund. I wish they would have got him on the album. That would have been really fucking dope. And he's, like, dropping references to Macho Man promos in I the... So I was much. like, oh, shit! <laughs> I fucking love that. It's just like, uh, we'll go, it's like, you're in the danger zone. It's like, oh yeah. shit. Someone did their fucking homework. Wish that carried on throughout the album more because it, it only just kind of touched on it once and then didn't really come back to it, which is a shame. Yeah. It, like there was a song called Masked Superstars. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. It, but it doesn't really play up in the themes so much. No, no. Yeah. But there is a lot more czarring going on. Uh, Harlem is now Zarlem, not a um, motorcade or whatever the heck it's called. It's now a Zarcade. Oh, yeah, it was Starcade. Yeah, Starcade, that's the word I was thinking about. Now yeah. it's, now it's Star Zarcade. That's right, yeah. <laughs> the producers are the Zarkeys instead of the Barkeys. 
Jesus. Oh, yeah, that's right. Fuck, yeah. I love that <laughs> I was like, shit. Oh, my God. Did this album meet your expectations? Fucking yes. It, it met them exactly. Like, it meant exactly what it was supposed to be. It didn't hit as hard for me, unfortunately. The album is called Zarface Meets Ghostface, right? Oh, yeah. Actually, that's a good point. That's a very good point. It's basically featuring Ghostface on, like, Half the tracks? Every couple of tracks. Yeah, like, there were some songs I was like, hey, wait a minute. (laughs) And I'm just going to go ahead and say, not all of them, on some of them that Ghostface was on, he wasn't fucking bringing his A-game. Oh, no, dude, I loved Ghostface Killer's fucking verses. There was one verse I didn't like. It was in one of the later songs where it just didn't feel like there was many, like, you know, what I love about Ghostface Killer is his imagery, right? And I feel like there, what was that one joint in particular? Oh, face off the first song where he goes like, when the sky starts to flicker, wait for the flash, boom, thunderbolts, the sound of the blast. And with like coupled with the beat and how he said it, it was just so fucking cool. Like it was like immediately, you could just like imagine what he's talking about. I did not think face off was a very strong first track. Oh, oh man, no, nah, I thought, I, I thought I, they were going strong until, until the last two tracks. I, and, and even then I felt like the track before the last one, it's not that I like, didn't like it, like it, like, cause I did dig the switch ups and stuff. But as far as like the beat work is concerned, it was just like, this whole album has been so over the top beat work that it's just like, why are you being chill now? I got to disagree because I really liked Mongolian beef and I, th- and I thought the last track was fine. But as far as face off, I thought like SO deck Ghostface, face. They all had like decent verses. Like I didn't think any of the verses on that track in particular were really all that great. They do have really good verses on this album. Don't get me wrong, but like for an opening track, on this long-awaited album with the introduction skit on a track called Face Off. I guess I kind of expected maybe like one-upsmanship. Like, you know, they're facing off, but it's like the verses didn't even interact. They were all just kind of there. I thought the beat was cool, and I thought the distorted vocals uh, throughout it and the sample. (laughs) That was so... At first, I thought I wasn't going to like that, but, you know, it's one of those things, like, it came back the second time, and it was like, oh, all right. (laughs) I thought the first two tracks, Face Off and Iron Claw, were kind of underwhelming. Oh my god, I fucking loved Iron Claw! When fucking Inspector Deck says that line, he says, um, I'm always on the go, all the lights green, general official, that's what the stripes mean, you get wiped clean, and then you hear that little, like a countertop. I love that fucking little thing. I thought the production was great, like, pretty much all throughout, I thought the production was great, and that kind of goes without saying when it comes with, uh, with Zarface albums. I liked the line from Esso's verse uh, where he goes, uh, I'm an alien from way past the moon, you see. I had to Shazam the anthem. It was new to me. Like, he heard the national anthem and I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, he, had to, he had to pull out the app. I thought you were going to say the thing about the Xenomorphs. Xenomorphs witnessed my alien flow from space and thought they had a case for cultural appropriation. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then, and this was on uh, Listen to the Color, the game I put my foot in there. You seem excited about my record being a Newberry. Now I got my book in there. I like you as a person, but as an MC, you could get turned to dust when I snap like the, half the MCU. Mm. I was like, ooh. <laughs> if you like the Marvel movies, <laughs> you need to listen to this fucking album. <laughs> uh, uh, what's, what's that one joy? I, I love this part. And the King heard voices where he literally, well, actually is himself. <laughs> Your army march slow because the czar flows bizarro like Superman's arch foe. And then he responds to himself like, it's actually Lex. And then he goes, well, I'm actually grabbing and slapping the back of your neck. <laughs> I fucking love that moment. <laughs> I like the line in, uh, well, actually, there's a few parts I highlighted in um, in Powers and Stuff, which is one of oh, my favorite tracks on the album. My favorite track is because of the fucking chorus. <laughs> Your best shit ain't better than his worst verse, and Zar face a triple threat, his rhyme in third person, and he's a cannibal, about to eat his third person. You as genuine as Pony, the karaoke version. <laughs> More smoke than the weed man. Indeed, man. Even Doc Strange fascinated with these hands. That's fucking dope. <laughs> Dude. Oh, my God. Well, uh, inspect the deck. I'm wig splitting. I'll chop your head quicker than a troop does. You washed up like bedtime kids. You're useless. Electric toothbrush is the level that you buzz be. I do it on my own. You need to click like BuzzFeed. Yes. <laughs> 
I was like, oh shit! The fucking parallel there. I was like, oh, it, like when a fucking line just catches you the fuck off guard. Just oh, oh and that could also oh shit. <laughs> And it was like, who are these kids on the chorus, man? Oh they, my god, like, that shit was so funny. I fucking loved them. But that one kid is just like, Zarface got the powers and stuff. It reminded me of, and we talked about it before. Isn't Flash Gordon stronger? No, Flash Gordon is stronger than Flash Gordon. He isn't. He is. That's what it fucking yeah. reminded me of when you just have kids yelling back and forth at each other, Zarface, Ghost Face, like they're arguing who's better. And then at the end, you hear one of them go, "What happened?" And one of the kid goes, "He smacked me in the." Face. <laughs> Getting a little too into it. Uh, Ghostface on Iron Claw. He goes like, uh, you acting all big now, but you ain't Christopher Wallace. See a girl on her knees. She just doing a solid. And the funny shit, you ain't gonna do shit about it. Have a seat over there. You should be doing the knowledge. <laughs> like, just like, oh, take notes, you know. <laughs> Now, on Morning Ritual... There's not a lot of topics on this album, right? No, there really aren't, no. Yeah, it, it's all... Look, you're here... You you know what this is. <laughs> you know what I mean? This isn't our first Zarface album. A lot of Zarface tracks are just kind of like... Kind of brag tracks, just kind of in your face, talking about how fucking dope we are and how awesome you know our fucking flows are. And yeah, but it's like how fun it is, you know. It's the creativity where they go with it, you know. But on Morning Ritual, you get a tease of what I've always really liked about Ghostface, and that is his storytelling. I wish there was more of again, but you know, it's like it's weird when you have Ghostface on an album and he just kind of does your brag rap shit. You know what his bread and butter is exactly. So to hear him kind of like, yeah, I mean, I'll just fuck around and do what you guys do. It's like, I don't know, man. It feels like you're like not working at 100%. Like it feels like you're kind of holding back just so you can like do what the, what the other boys are doing. I won't even lie though. I think Esoteric had the better verse on the Super so uh, um Wait, was that the one? Super Soldiers? No, uh, uh, Morning Ritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he had the better verse just because how it ended. I don't even want to spoil it. Go listen to that fucking song. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just going to say that, too, because as much as I love Ghostface as a storyteller, his story really doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're totally right on that one. Yeah, yeah. But Esoteric actually does have a beginning, middle, and end. It was so great. I thought that's when, like, it finally fucking clicked. Up until that point, I just kind of felt like he wasn't giving it his all. And wasn't as involved with the project, which, yeah, that was kind of like, oh, come on, you know? Yeah, on some, on some of them, it just kind of feels like, yeah, we recorded a song, it was too short. We fucking sent it off to Ghostface, he did a feature verse. Because they don't interact a lot. Dude, I really liked Iron Claw. I just found another fucking lyric I like. <laughs> he says, um, trailblazing, hair raising like a man bun. I'm so psycho in mics, you soul cycle entice. These heels turn on a legend like Acura Keys. Gap factories, how I'm catching casualties. Oh, God <laughs> fucking damn it. I'm so mad that I didn't come up with this shit. <laughs> it's scream into your arm good. <laughs> Dude, oh my god. When I got this fucking lyric, he says, Your future looking bleak like you're trying to be Jay's friend. You put the S in wordplay, you get swordplay, so you know that stabbing tracks is my forte. And I didn't even think about the fact that S, oh, S, O, T, uh, oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fucking part I have highlighted on uh, the King Heard Voices, which is a fucking great track. Um, mm -hmm. We're fucking esoteric. Again, your boy steals the fucking show. Dude, I really think he was like, there's two fucking legends on this track, I, uh, I can't be fucking slipping. <laughs> I've noticed, Esoteric normally is the fucking breakout star. <laughs> right? He's fucking dope as shit. He goes, don't get dunked over beef like some marinade, life's a masquerade, I put on a mask and raid, I smack a rapper like I'm slapping on some aftershave, that's a wide line between being brave and acting brave, used to be up on the train banging jack of spades, now these groupies want the D like a pass and grade don't get it twisted like my daughter Ailey's braids keep on talking that shit will get your casket laid oh my god <laughs> I had that written down too <laughs> <laughs> we're fucking comparing those yeah, I got that one too <laughs> uh, yeah um, dude I was about to quote a lyric for the morning ritual but then I realized like no no no, no can't, can't spoil it can't spoil it <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a surprise for the boys <laughs> going back to powers and stuff that was the <laughs> That was the song on the album that, to me, sounded the most like a Zarface song with the production. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Like the gritty, kind of like MF Doom inspired, like, like, like you're sampling something from a fucking cartoon type shit. 
Mm-hmm. That's the one thing I missed on this. I, I, I guess I was spoiled from the uh, from the Zar- from the Metal Face album. Was like I missed the uh, the like Fantastic Four and Spider Man <laughs> yeah, samples. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. There was one sample on here that it didn't make sense, and I didn't know what it was from. And I didn't know why it was there. There were one or two, like the outros for like whenever they did like an outro with like a beat, I, I would rock with it because it felt like to me, it felt like the bars were just so dope and they were coming at you so fast. And just like, all right, you need a second to like yeah. <laughs> relax after that. You know what I mean? Like there was like a cool down period for a lot of these songs. But sometimes whenever they would do like a sample, it would just be like, what was that about? Like at the end of Mass Superstars, it goes like rapper rapper and then you hear like a sample of at his trial he was found and then it cut off and then rapper goes, yeah like what huh that was weird that one caught me off guard and there was another song where it's like how did he get in there better question is how is he gonna get out like but what the fuck is that doing there like it didn't make it sense in the context you're absolutely right because I was listening. I was trying to figure out what was because usually that's what they do. Like they'll put in a sample and it'll be like, uh, "It's related to what so and so just said," you know. But it was just like, "Uh, all right, well." And it was just like there was that pop moment I had of like, "Oh shit, that sounds like uh, you know, Tommy Chong." But then it was like, "But why is he here?" <laughs> <laughs> It, it was the same way I felt about that uh, um, Untouchable song by Eminem, you know, with uh, my mama took it to me, tried to tell me how to live. It's like, yeah, we all love teaching song, but like, why is it here? <laughs> <laughs> I also don't want people to forget about teaching song, but I also need context for why it's happening. <laughs> there was another line in Listen to the Color I thought was worth pointing out. But I go for bread, flows overhead, Ticonderoga, that's the only time you're holding lead. Fucking Ghostface Killer, in his verse, he goes like, um, uh, I still have my jewels on, hugging my neck, then I made it to the bathroom, boner all in my sweats, 60 second piss, felt more like a nut, Sunday morning church chick, let me hit it in the, and then you hear like a sharp cut off, and a woman just going, oh, all right. <laughs> like, <laughs> like a church type woman going like, oh, okay now. <laughs> it's the fucking, I got a unicorn torn for a, stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking run the jewels. <laughs> Overall, uh, what what score did you get for Czar Face meets Ghost Face? Uh, four and a half. Four and a half. I came out with a 3.75. Oh, man. I thought it was probably one of the weaker of the Czar Face projects we've listened to. But with that said, there are definitely some really strong tracks on here. That, you know, they're going straight into fucking playlists. Yeah, there, there are definitely some tracks I, I have added to my uh, Station Head playlist, uh, wh- which y'all should check out, by the way. <laughs> I'm actually um, thinking about doing a when this ep- after this episode premieres, uh, playing the album on Station Head, you know, just have, having people come through and talk about it. You know what I mean? That's pretty cool. Yeah. For those who haven't heard it yet, or maybe those who actually like have and want to discuss it. I think that's a really cool idea. Yeah. And uh, I- I'm thinking about doing this going forward with the good albums i listen to and speaking of the opposite of that (laughs) (laughs) we gotta get to our main event keeping up the wrestling theme we've got fearless fred fury (laughs) our third count it third icp album we are reviewing on the going off podcast dude what the hell was this (laughs) They can't, dude, they just keep getting worse. I'll tell you what this was. This was the best ICP album we've reviewed. Uh. <laughs> this was better than The Missing Link. Really? What the fuck was that think- crap? Oh, oh abs- no, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. <laughs> the songs I thought were the worst were Red Fred, uh, the first actual oh, song. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> and, uh, and look it, it rhymes. Hothead. The worst one I thought were uh, Red Fred, just ca- j- purely just because it introduced me to this bullshit. That's, that's honestly why. <laughs> Red Fred got a bad rap because <laughs> uh, I listened to the ICP albums way back when, and and Dylan was a fan. He got me listening to him. He was the he was actually the one who told me like, "Hey, you got to check out the single on this ICP album." And that's when I texted you and was like, "Hey, you know, maybe this is actually worth checking out." W- what song was it? I have to know. <laughs> It was Fury. That one was definitely better. <laughs> I actually like that one because the first verse, like, he was doing some imagery. I really liked how fucking dope and catchy the bitch at the end of the lines. 
Oh, you know I didn't like that. Oh, I <laughs> loved it. That was so cool. I fucking, I, I was rocking with that shit. No, I actually thought uh, in um, Violent J and then Shaggy, they had d- uh, pretty cool first verses. And then they did the second verses where they did the bitch. And I was just like, really? Oh, I like that. Like, this is just <laughs> what we expect from you. I don't know. I, w- I wasn't digging that at all. <laughs> But well, we got to go back to the intro. We got to go back to the motherfucking intro. <laughs> How we were introduced to this bullshit piece of shit album. We got to go to the actual intro where <laughs> it, it's, it's this voiceover and, and it, it sets the stage as to what the theme of the album is. And it gets visited a, a few times. Um, the theme is overall uh, that there is a creature in the Dark Carnival Mm. And we're introduced to yet another one. <laughs> and in this case, it's a creature who feeds on uh, people who, like, let people take advantage of them and walk all over them and don't stand up for themselves. This and- is like, I mean, that, I feel like that's not something that someone who has that personality trait needs. I don't think they need so, uh, another person haunting them. No, <laughs> you know? no, I will. I, I do agree. Absolutely. But the one that I thought was like, all right, I, I, I kind of get what they're going here is that, like, people who are like life sucks but not like yeah yeah not like in the context of depression like this is oddly one of the more considerate like nuanced takes <laughs> yeah because at no point was it like one of those fucking self-help people on twitter where it's like depression's bullshit it's all in your head it was like people who have a decent life but think that like oh life sucks whatever it's like man there's fucking dead people who would really take issue with you saying that shit because their time is up and they'll they'll like gladly take your place with like i thought that was a really cool idea you're right you're right you're you know what actually yeah you're absolutely right because um i'm thinking about uh the later track right you know what i'm talking about it's kind of the centerpiece of the album satellite yeah, because Satellite has the part where it goes, uh, you got kids that love you, and if not, you got a roof over your head, and if not, you got two legs beneath you, and if not, well, at least you ain't getting beat up and shot. <laughs> like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> like, that was actually, like, a pretty cool verse. Yeah, I remember hearing it being like, okay, all right, you're actually giving me, you're giving me a topic right now. Oh, oh, back to the intro, back to the, back to the fucking intro, where it starts off with what can only be described as... It sounds like if a dubstep song exploded and we were just hearing the random parts like falling where they may oh, okay. <laughs> as fucking deep voice having Scottish ass fake ass Sean Connery uh, sound alike motherfucker. What the fuck was that? <laughs> I don't know. But you know what? I'll absolutely take him over the other voice we hear. Fucking Willoughby can get the oh, fuck my, out. I didn't, I, I didn't know who this is, because apparently this character's been around for a while. I remember hearing that voice in other albums. I didn't know he had a name. <laughs> apparently his name is fucking Willoughby. It's, it's not the same voice I remember from, from the original uh, deck, uh, as we are now, by the way. Oh, oh, yeah. In the middle of a new Joker's card deck. Which can only mean one thing. Mm. When they get to that sixth one... What, what's what's the reveal going to be this time? You know what ah. I mean? Like, what are they going to do? <laughs> and apparently the the missing link uh, lost and found counted as one card. Oh, like what? Like Jake and Jekyll, you know, Jake and Jekyll, uh, the Hell's Wrath. And, yeah, you know, uh, that thing Hell's you got to do to prolong basic ahead of the curve in terms of like making a, a franchise and then splitting the final one into two parts. What did you think of the Electric Avenue parody? Oh my god! Look, I was gonna surprise people with that one. <laughs> we got a rock tattoo, Westford. Westford, Westford. Oh, and oh, open oh, fucking fire. Fucking awkward. <laughs> it was so awkward. It was like stop it. And I it thought it was catchy, back. though. I mean, the original lyric of "and then we'll take it higher" doesn't really like make that much sense. Nah. So, so to change it to, like, and burn the fucking tires, like, I, that at least, like, okay, that's an imagery I can I can actually understand. You know what I mean? Take that, Eddie Grant. That's an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> but the first half is not. <laughs> no, no. Fearless Red Fred or Fearless Fred Fury, whatever the fuck, he's overall a pretty shitty character, and I hate his name. Horrible. I hate the design, too. It's so fucking generic. Like, ooh, he's got a fucking uh, uh, crowbar. Like, what? <laughs> he's got a crowbar and the f- and he like 
punches you in the face when you die. Like, his fist is the last <laughs> thing you punches see. punches you in the face. Like, if that doesn't sound like they're fucking scraping for ideas. Ooh, he punches you in the face. Ooh. Like, your previous albums were about sending people to fucking hell. Fucking a riddle box telling you your fate. Someone punches you in the face? It's not on par with the great Malenko. It's not on par with the amazing Jacko brothers. Not even close. Those motherfuckers were juggling your choice voices in life or some shit. That's an interesting idea. The way they tried to describe him, it was so dumb. Because, okay, you have Red Freddy's like, oh, and we also got to talk about fucking Violent J's newfound flow. The fucking actually sounding like a birthday clown trying to rap flow that he's doing now. No, Red Freddy does not forgive. After you meet Fred, you do not live. Like, what is that? What was that? Stop doing that. That was a really shitty track, man. And And it sucks because, like, there are tracks on here that really aren't that bad, and some of them, some of them, I dare actually say, are pretty fucking good. At least one of them. In the third verse, I, and I thought it was Shaggy, like, trying to imitate uh, uh, Violent J's flow, but no, it was just Violent J getting even higher. <laughs> but- <laughs> I thought that too, I was like, oh, it's him again. He had a certain pitch that he was going for, but it was slightly higher than he thought it was going to be, and he just decided to say, fuck it and keep going. Like, he was just like, I don't know <laughs> It's like, oh my god, stop. Something you've mentioned before, and it comes up on this album again, is that it is essentially the Violent J show. Shaggy only comes up every so often. He does come up a bit more than I think he did on the previous albums, but it mostly is Violent J is doing almost all the heavy lifting. And my thing is, I used to think Violent J was the better rapper of the two, just because, you know, he just rapped more. <laughs> it's like, whenever Shaggy does come in, he actually has, like, some multis every now and then. It's like, oh. Oh, all right. Shaggy isn't bad when he isn't just yelling shit. Yeah. Which is unfortunately a good bit of the time. Yeah. When I mentioned earlier about ICP being considerate, there was an odd, almost attempt at a content warning at the very end of the (laughs) album. where, Where there's a song just called Beware, and it's before the very last song. And in the warning... They refer to the last track, I Like It Rough, is Insane Clown Posse's most disturbing track. Dude, you've done songs about killing children. This is not, (laughs) not even close to their most disturbing song. I get you why you might think so, but it's not. Now, I definitely... Did not listen to the song all the way through because I didn't. was fucking no, I was disgusted. Oh come on, dude! I can't fucking. It, it was just kind of like I think it, it, honestly, maybe if it had come earlier in the album, I would have been able to take it. But it was just like, <sighs> like just the deep side. Of like, okay, I get it. You're gonna what? What the fuck was the lyric? Like, because the thing is. They all. This is their thing. They always take things slightly too over the top. <laughs> I think that's the point. I think that's the gimmick. Yeah, but in a way that's like it's the sort of Family Guy over the top, where it's just like I can't even enjoy it because it's too too much. There was one lyric where he said like I'd like to show you black magic, fear, pain, and red rum, and a sexual bedlam that could make the dead come. I thought that was like oh shit. Like yeah, that's the sort of gothic shit you want to get into. And then he goes like with that blood on your skin, I'd like to cook you and eat you, shit you out, then eat you again. Like that's a fucking Jay and Silent Bob bit. You know, on fucking uh, from the movie where they're like we're going to make them eat our shit, the shit out there. Like that's not sexy. That's not that's not even like beating BDSM over the top sexy. That's just gross, and you know it's not true. What I thought was interesting about I Like It Rough, especially for ICP, was that it goes back and forth. The violence doesn't go one way, especially in the one part where I will criticize it that goes on for way too fucking long. The, I'll, I'll choke you with your panties, and then then you choke me with your... And it goes on for, like, an entire fucking verse. But no, like, I'll let you do this, and I'll... It's like, oh, shit. Okay, so this actually, like, yeah, sure, like what you said, it is, like, over-the-top, gross-out, no-fuck way, but at at the end of the day, at its very core, this is almost like a between-two-consenting-adults, like, a Juggalos, like, like, Juggalos are putting this song on and fucking, you know it. You didn't listen to the whole song, which, which is a travesty. I got um, a minute and a half. <laughs> 
You missed out on a lot of content then. The, the song is six and a half minutes, by the way. Yeah, I saw that. I had I had a I had a moment where I was like, oh no. <laughs> if my memory serves me right, it ends with the girl or the runaway or whoever uh sounding violent J with I wanna say an electric drill and he comes and that's it. Uh- <laughs> Yeah, you missed out on Violet J. Yell the words, I'm coming. Oh, God! <laughs> if there's one thing I never want to hear my entire fucking life. You're, you know what? That content warning was fucking right. <laughs> For that alone. <laughs> That's the brace too far. You can cut off <laughs> kids' heads, have sex with dead bodies. I just don't need to hear you have an orgasm, bro. <laughs> I don't need to hear fucking Violet J. Climax. Thank you. Because <laughs> with all the other stuff, I can be like, eh, that didn't really happen. Hearing you climax... I'd be like, well, all right, that definitely happened. <laughs> yeah, it, it's all, it's a little too realistic. Yeah. <laughs> no. Some of the other tracks I thought were okay, and I'll go into um, what they were about. We could talk about them a little bit. What the fuck wasn't that good? Um, just starting off with that one, because we got to mention it. Um, oh, okay, so this... I was almost kind of on the fence because of the beat work, Me right? Too. Because it, yeah. at first I was just like, all right, this is just stupid. And then I was like, oh, wait, are they using like the, the what the fuck explosion meme? Uh, yeah, from way back when. And I was like, sort oh. of. I, I, that's one of those things where it's just like, this meme has been out of fashion long enough where it's like, you're getting cool points for referencing it. You know what I mean? At what point does Violent J say he's firing his laser? <laughs> Yeah, right. Every time I listen to one of their songs, I hear a good something that's interesting, and then I hear something that immediately contradicts it, right? How much pressure can, you know, uh, the brain take? I'm shaking. How much weight till it gives way and breaks? And, like, his flow turns into, like, a spoken word sort of thing. And with the building up of the tension of the beat, when that what the fuck explosion happens, it's it works. You know what I mean? Like, there's been build up and release in a way that's satisfying. But I just hated that dumb lyric where he's like, the heat increases, the brain bakes. It's just like the way he said it was just like, well, now I never want to show anyone this song because that sounded stupid. <laughs> yeah. I liked how it had, like, like, metal, hard rock beats and riffs i thought that was pretty cool yeah satellite i thought was all right um especially for like its context it's yeah content. exactly that that was you know what it is um this one and freedom yes 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 they are very complimentary tracks they are like very similar in their their catchy sort of feel good in freedom it's talking about all the things jay is free to do and he even decides to throw in a fucking reference to his daughter, which I thought was really sweet. I'm not even categorizing this as homophobic. I just thought it was oddly worded. I know exactly what you're saying, yeah. I'm free to learn karate or how to cook up chicken saute, whip up a latte, fuck hoes and be not gay, and fuck a lot of netting and get a, I got a bedding without a wedding, got him spreading and blowing like Armageddon. And it was like one of those things where it was like, that's some dope wordplay. Why the fuck did you have to say like, I can fuck hoes and be not gay? Like, that's just weird. Like, why would you <laughs> Why would you say be not gay if the last word that rhymes is is gay? You could just leave it there. Why is it n- not be? Yeah. Why is it be not? That doesn't make yeah. sense. Why would, you, why would like, you purposefully switch that up? There, there's so many like wordings here that are so like oddly amateur. Shaggy, I feel like, has improved slightly as a lyricist, but overall, they still have like those things where it's just like, wow, you guys just haven't gotten better at like certain just like flow things you know what i mean like just the flow of words and making them work well i say as i'm fucking stuttering over my words uh (laughs) going on to a fucking topic what did you think of game over that was so fucking bad i absolutely like and it was one of those things at first i was like oh game like it's gonna be a song about video games Uh, oh and and then when i kind of saw that what it was going to you know the typical insane clown posse shit oh you know uh, this is what they always do like i don't feel like they're taking aim at gamers specifically i think in general they always do this thing of over exaggerated character pieces that's one of their things that they like to do and so like i didn't you know i don't think anyone should take it personally i think they're just taking the piss but it was just like the chorus, I didn't think was funny because the jokes were so fucking surface. Like, oh, uh, oh, what do you have no motivation to get pussy? It's just like, uh, sh- 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 shut the fuck up. You know? <laughs> yeah. There was one line I thought was funny. This guy said I was fucking fat. How does he know? I love that line. That was a great line. <laughs> 
<laughs> talking shit in my ear hole. He fucking called me fat though. How the fuck did he know? Is this some kind of camera on me? Is this so? Because I was just jacking off nine, uh, um, only minutes ago. For me, it's nothing to tell a nine year old to fuck off fast. And if he was standing right here, I'd choke his ass. A warrior on the screen, but don't pull my plug. And it's just like, I don't know. It was just weird for him to be like, oh, if you were here, oh, I'd give you a stern talking to. Like, what, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is this saber rattling right now? You know? <laughs> Low. The second song parody on the album, which is odd. Um, I'm not used to song parodies, essentially, from uh, Insane Clown Posse. But this time, it's a parody of Time of the Season by the Zombies. (laughs) And it's odd because, you know, ICP and Eminem have this long history. And there's that song on uh, Marshall Mathers LP2. Where Eminem kind of does the same thing, but he did it like four or five years ago. And better. (laughs) Yeah, a lot better. Oh my God. Oh my. Yo, the fucking, I think it's near the end where he tries to do the, you know, the the little switch up. It's the time for the sea. But he gets so off key. Yeah. And it's like, and it was one of those moments, like I said earlier, where it sounds like he was off key, but he tried to say fuck it and just like stay where, uh, up in the higher place where he was and try to, you know, ha- harmonize it with the melody or whatever. And it was just like, ooh, but I could hear you didn't know where you were going there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like the 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 Electric Avenue joint. No, this one most of it is just a cover of the song, yeah. but insane clown possified. So it's just his shitty singing over the song that kind of requires you to be able to sing. They just jack the entire melody, which is like kind of unheard of, and and it feels weird saying this, but beneath. ICP to do that. Well, see, like what I was thinking of, uh, cause I remember a couple of years ago, they did an album where it was like a whole bunch of insane clown possified covers. And so I'm thinking maybe this is just kind of like, Hey, people like that. Oh, okay. So every now and then we're just going to throw in a track like this. Okay. I-, I wasn't aware that existed, but what they were doing before was like jump around and shit. You know what I mean? Like songs where it's like, Oh, people rapping did a cover of like above the law murder rap. And so it's like, that makes sense. Like, you know, they're rappers, but fucking this is just like, but you guys can't sing. No one wants this. <laughs> but going on to uh, Triplex, which um, is a more interesting concept than it is in execution. That's exactly what I was thinking. They were trying to go for some split type of shit. Yeah, what you got here is it's like uh, the narrator of sorts is kind of like a therapist or a psychologist trying to talk to this person who has three uh, split personalities and he's like trying to talk to them individually, but none of the personalities, like, have good verses. Like, they're all just kind of mini, they don't really go anywhere. It's more it's more shock shit, but n- hardly any of it really lands. It, it's, it's this in Night of Red Rum, it, it, and I hate, like, when I say, you know, I'm actually a bit of... I wouldn't say a fan of Insane Clown Posse, but they have songs that I like. They definitely do have good songs every so often. It, I know it's, like, unheard of, and people just kind of shit on them entirely. And they are capable of writing some really good songs. It's just that for most of the time, it's shock shit. And that's my thing. Whenever they have, like, a concept that they really care about, or whenever it's, like, sometimes care... Yeah, sometimes character pieces, they do, they do uh, fun joint. Like, every Halloween, I still love that joint. The generic, I'm just gonna kill your murder, I fucking tune out. Because it's just so boring. It's just like, it's basically their version of mainstream, you know, I got more money than you and I'm fucking more bitches. It's just like, they're fucking... It's so generic. You know what I mean? It's just like, okay, I get it. You're going to rip off my head and and put a fucking straw in it so you can sip the blood. Like, ooh. You know what I mean? It's just so... <laughs> uh, but yeah, Night of uh, Red Rum. Fucking the verse where he goes... Uh, and then fucking... Okay, so Murder Fred, whoever the fuck it is, has a, 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 a rat... And it randomly gets mentioned, but not in any way that fucking matters. So it's like, why the fuck is it? I completely forgot about it. Yeah, it's just like, oh, red rum. My dick bled some. Flip sip the blood spat with his red tongue. Talk about your dick is bleeding. And then <laughs> flip licks your dick. <laughs> but but fuck that, because now we're on a story about you stabbing a, a woman in the titty with your with a pin. You know, it's just like so like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, where are you going with this dumb shit? I thought... Nobody's fault was okay. 
Oh, no, 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 didn't no? rock that shit at all. There are two songs no. on here where they fucking, I'm just going to say these words. <laughs> I'm just going to say these words and just, and just see how they hit you. Insane Clown Posse on a soft ass beat, but still doing horrorcore shit, singing in a whiny fucking voice <laughs> yeah. with auto tune. <laughs> Isn't that what Insane Clown Posse was missing all along? Fucking auto tune. They've been on an interesting journey, is all I'm gonna say. <laughs> oh my god, it's so fucking bad. Comparatively speaking, I thought it was one of the better tracks well, on the album. The only thing I liked about it was Shaggy. Like, I loved that he was like, like, Violent J is being this dumbass with these horrible lyrics. It was a great sounding plan, but it was built on quicksand. That shit was over before it even began. Left with my dick in my hand. I don't understand. Like, left with my dick in my hand. Don't understand. Looking like a fucking loser. Meanwhile, Shaggy in the background is like, don't be ashamed, bro, that's game. And I was just like, no, it's not. <laughs> but it's no. just like, like, being left with your dick in your hand is not game in any capacity. What are you talking about? But it was like, it was so oddly infectious. I was like, you know what? Shaggy's Shaggy's big up in his boy, you know? <laughs> like, I almost felt, it was almost redeemed by Shaggy just going like, man, you don't want to be no weak lame. You got that street game, bro. You know, it's just like, it's like, hey, don't feel so bad. You, you're doing it. <laughs> I thought the beats on both uh, Nobody's Fault and Hothead were all right, though. I think the beats were, like, the best part. The fucking... They both had, like, pretty cool trap beats. I will say that about ICP is that they're actually... They're updating their sound. They're updating their sound, and it doesn't feel forced. Like, it fucking works most of the time. One of their big things is macabre character pieces that don't really have a lesson or a moral. It's just like, here's this weird story, you know? And, and that's what I do like about them. But the thing is, the verses have nothing to do with that. Like, they have this setup that's really cool, and then in the verses, it's just more random shit about how uh, you like bloodworms burrowing through my stomach deep in my gut, and uh, dark shadows in, fresh, uh, uh, in search of a freshly pissed on corner in the woods behind a Walmart. I'm jacking off on a big fat dead slut, like, oh, fucking all right already. If most of the stuff wasn't, like, random bullshit, then the verses would be better, because I like the chorus on that one, too. The chorus and the beat. But then everything in between, the fucking verses are like, eh, whatever. If you've been doing this shit for this long, you know, like, the shtick is gonna wear off at some point. And you can only say the same random shit so many times before it's like, yeah, man, you've kind of already said that. I always wonder about people who make, like, so many songs that are just the same shit over and over again. It's just like, how do you, how can you tell the difference between your fucking songs? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Going back to Night of Red Rum, there were, again, they have little lyrics that kind of work, where he says, uh, well, again, first, it doesn't, like, I'm quoting the lyric, but in order to set up the context, I have to quote the part of the lyric that, that's kind of dumb, so, <laughs> he's like, I'm Mr. Happy, psychotic and crazy, if I could, I'd squeeze your neck and pop your head off, daisies! I don't know what the fuck that was about. Found a thick liquor bottle, uh, snuck it in a titty bar. The bouncer had his back turned. I hit him hard. And then you hear like the shattering goes like, it shattered. He turned around like it didn't happen. And then he dropped. <laughs> Delayed reaction. <laughs> was just, I, I kind of like, like, I thought it was going to be like, oh, then he beat the shit out of me. It was like, oh, no, 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 it happened. It was just, you know, <laughs> like, sometimes, you know, it, it just it, like, you know, when something happens to you, you just don't react. Right. <laughs> it just took a second. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and on fucking low, there's a part where he just goes like, he says low every like it's one of those things where it's just like low and then he says one thing and then low and then he says another thing and you're thinking like oh is it related to the lowness of how he feels you know like oh i low like a bug or a beetle you know like a lyric like that but he goes like low antifreeze in your cola low the ayatollah low ebola low <laughs> like what yeah, that was pretty fucking whack. <laughs> what does the Ayatollah have to do with being low? Is there something He's I'm not getting low here? down, man? I don't know. Oh shit! And I forgot the fucking <laughs> brother. What is the fucking Hulk Hogan <laughs> random shit that he keeps fucking putting in the song? Like it showed up on low twice, and then randomly near the end of the album, it shows up again. Where you go, brother? <laughs> yeah, it shows up. Um. At the very end of Like It Rough, like at the very last second of the album. Yeah, okay, so I, did, I, yeah, I listened through the first time. I didn't listen to the second time. Okay, okay. I will admit, the, the brother sample made me laugh every yeah, time right? I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm just like, all right, all right, they know what they're doing. <laughs> it, it's it's so fast and so short that it fits <laughs> wherever they put it. It fits and it works. It like, got me every fucking time. That should have been the concept album. <laughs> but finally, we got to get to goddamn the the clear star of the show, Shimmer. Yo, okay. I was again. This is another one of their. Um, you know, there, there's no moral. There's no. Well, they do have a moral at the end, and like they kind of. Yeah. I feel like that kind of ruined it. Like I wanted it to be like their other songs, where it's just here's a weird scenario, and isn't that fucking weird? You know what I mean? But they were I, like the way the moral or the conclusion works in the context of the album is that. Like, the whole tone is, like, sticking up, standing up, you know, not just letting shit happen. So, with Shimmer, Mm. at the end of it, he does face his fear, and, you know, he's kind of, like, rewarded for it. And that and that ties back to the theme of the album, and I I didn't mind that. I actually thought that was a pretty cool conclusion to the song. Well, I felt like it didn't make sense. It was just like, oh, yeah, you shouldn't fear things. Like, a woman trying to bite your neck and screaming at you, like... I don't know. I think you have a reason to fear that. I think you have a little bit of a reason to fear that. (laughs) The song starts in a really odd way where it's like a child praying and being like, hey, here's what the fuck's going on. There's like this weird undead woman in my closet. And when I try to sleep, I look and I see her and she's in there. She like has uh, someone and she like she bites their neck and... And, like, chews on the skin. Oh, I do love the chorus. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, finally, at the end of it, it's like, hey, you know, I fucking got out of bed and I fucking faced Shimmer. And, you know, she fucking, she screamed in my face and she bit my neck. And then I woke up and I was in the closet and I was clutching my Bible. And I'm rewarded for having faced the fear and she's not coming back as i'm listening to the song i was trying to figure out like yeah a little bit about like what is this character's maybe motivation and earlier in the verses he says shimmer hates laughter in juveniles throughout my day i'd hear her say i'll make you pay for every smile she was a bad girl who liked to cause agony i guarantee now she wants to terrify and bury me so it's like okay we have a little bit of backstory she hates the laughter of children How's that related to the face your fears thing? Like, what the fuck is that about? Yeah, that that doesn't. <laughs> like, why get that backstory if that's not going to really, you know what I mean? We get another brother, by the way, at the ending skit, which I thought was the best skit on the album, was at the end of Shimmer, which makes Shimmer the all-around best track. <laughs> uh, where, yeah, it's Willoughby, and he's super annoying, yeah, but he's no, saying... Yeah. <laughs> But he's saying, like, someone comes up to you, fucking slap a condom on a pipe bomb and shove that shit up your ass and say, you can scare me! And just punch him in the face and then explode. And it's like, all right, that's pretty funny. <laughs> and I felt like that undercut the message because it was just like, I know. all right, you know, because <laughs> it, it happened like immediately right afterwards. And it was just kind of like, well, it's not a great message, but OK. And then it was just like, hey, you want to be rewarded? <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> it, it was too soon. I wish <laughs> yeah. it would have been. It's like, it's like, man, you got to let this shit breathe. Will yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come back in a minute. What was the one song? I, I was trying to remember where that note was. I, I um. I made a note, and I can't remember if it was that song or the other one, but I'll I'll just say it and see if you remember it. There was a song on here that I could have sworn was going to be, like, a cover of Love Galore by SZA. And I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) Like, I I had that moment of, like, going, like, I wish you guys could see my face right now. (laughs) Because I was just like, are they really going to do this? Like, I, there was, there was, str- I've never been more in trepidation of what Insane Clown Posse were planning to do in a song than when I fucking was listening to that song. I was like, nobody's fault. That's what it was. Oh, it's not nobody's fault. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's way too modern for them, though. Fucking eight, 80s Eddie Grant, fucking 90s Cha Cha Slide. We're not going to get SZA. That's why I was so confused. I was just like, oh, oh, is this happening? <laughs> I really had that moment. The hair was standing up on the back of my neck. Like, oh no, we're not going to do this, are we? <laughs> and here's the moment of truth. Uh, I got to ask you, RC, what did you rate Fearless Fred Fury by ICP? Dude, let me, let, let me give you the breakdown. Okay. There are, how many tracks? 15 tracks, uh, minus the skits. Mm. Overall, like, the, the song ratings all together... Mm. Uh, you know, of each individual star rating added together, uh, combined to a whopping 11. 
So, divided. Oh, boy. 0. 0.733. Oh, man. Dude, this thing barely gets a one by virtue of you have to round up after uh, 0. 0.5. <laughs> wow. I gave it a two and a half. <laughs> no, I fucking... Dude, I am not playing with you. Don't listen to this shit. This is fucking horrible. <laughs> Dude, fucking, it might be because we did the two Missing Link albums that I was expecting so much worse <laughs> that this was like, like I said, there, there were only a couple songs where like when I listened to the album twice, I was like, man, I really don't want to listen to that again. The other ones were like, yeah, oh, fucking, I don't, I don't really mind. I was not here for it. It was somewhat enjoyable. It had its moments. Maybe I need to go back and listen to uh, Missing Link mm. Found, and, and, and maybe I could I could appreciate it more. <laughs> no, you know what? Fuck, I'm going back to my review. I'm not listening to that. <laughs> I'm going to go back to my review of it, see what I said, and it'd be like, all right, maybe, you know what? May, maybe in perspective, but as it stands right now, this <sighs> is... Because I do remember at the time being... like I remember the, the first Missing Link album, I remember being like... Ah, you know, it's a typical ICP fair. And I remember the second one being just like, get this shit out of my face. <laughs> this shit was funny at first. Now I'm fucking over it. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll look back <laughs> and see. But as it stands right now, this might be one of the worst albums I've ever listened to. Man, nah, I can't, I can't, I, I can't give it that, no, it's not that bad, I've definitely listened, on this show we've definitely listened to worse well, I mean, oh, You know what, alright, nothing beats a little B, nothing beats a little B <laughs> I think that's <laughs> the absolute the bottom mark, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what, actually, alright, let me put it in perspective, put it in perspective I think this is one of the worst Insane Clown Posse albums, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in perspective like that Okay yeah, I mean, this deck has so far been very disappointing. Dude, it's been all stinkers, man. Dude, even as an insane clown posse, I think that's what I'm saying. I'm an apologist. I'm an insane clown posse apologist. That's what I am. I'm just like, all right, I understand. But did you check out this track, though? You know, that's You, you that's gotta go I, back to the mid-90s. That was the golden era. I remember them having more going on than this. The, the sound is definitely cool. I do like how they're updating their sound. Uh, well, hmm, I do think their flows are better. You know what I mean? Like, if you're, if you're rapping for 20 years, something's got to get better, you know? <laughs> so their flows are definitely better. They use more multis. But I think they were more creative back then. That's what I'll say. I think they made up for their lack of talent with creativity in the songs that really used it. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. And I feel like these songs, they don't have the same spark of creativity that they kind of had before. You, you know, they, I feel like they're falling into a funk. Like, I mean, if you really look at it, fucking, um, it was either, uh, what's the song that's telling you to, ooh, appreciate life and all that sort of shit. It's basically Miracles 2019 with the same sort of like, they'll have lyrics that are legitimately like, oh yeah, that does make me think. Maybe I should appreciate life. And then they have other lyrics where it's like, that was fucking stupid, you know? And so, and it's like, it sounds like a parody of their own fucking song halfway through. You know what I mean? Like, oh, if you have a song about appreciating life, well, someone eventually would come along and make a parody of it saying, oh, you should appreciate when a fucking pelican steals your cell phone or whatever fucking dumbass lyric was in that <laughs> miracle song. You know what I mean? But the thing is, you're like, wait, but it's in this song. Uh, so now I don't know, am I supposed to be laughing? Am I supposed to be appreciating life? What the fuck? It's like, free to be. Be a shrink and listen or have one hear me make my face an exercise bike seat so fat hoes can sit on me yeah what <laughs> what did you really have did you really have a problem with that part but what's wrong he, with that he's gonna make his face that's just dumb, <laughs> that's just yeah, dumb. dumb. i'm gonna make my face into an exercise bike seat no you're not i know you're not gonna do that you can't do that's physically impossible you fucking have the wrong mindset going into this i think it's just so it's overly not gonna make dumb. sense like, man it isn't gonna all make sense like it's the it, like I like it when they're random funny, not random, just random. You know, it's mm. the difference between the lull to random and a good YouTube poop. You know what I mean? Well, that about wraps it up for this week's episode of the Going Off Podcast. Thank you very much for checking us out this week. If this is your first time listening to us, all the old episodes are on SoundCloud and iTunes. Just search Going Off Podcast. That's G O I N apostrophe Off Podcast. Check us out on Twitter. Patreon, we both have our own Patreon pages, patreon.com slash rapcritic and patreon.com slash muse. There you can find out how you can request an album to be reviewed on the show. 
Follow us on our Teespring stores to check out our new fresh, fresh merch. And uh, check out RC on the station head. Uh, how do people check out your station head, by the way? How do people get there? Man, you download the app. Just look up Rap Critic, uh, one word. Like, literally, once you download the app, you know, you, you can search radio stations or songs or shit like that. And then just in the search bar, just type Rap Critic, like, without the space. And boom, it's me. Well, until next week, for the Going Off podcast, I'm Muse. And I'm Rap Critic, and keep spitting that true shit while they're spitting that poop dick. <laughs> poop dick. This motherfucker said poop dick. Oh, for fuck's sake. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> Indeed.